Believe it or not, human engineering is being proposed as a solution to prevent those evil meat eaters from destroying the planet. Yes, we're going to hear from Matthew Lau, a bioethicist over at NYU University. He gave this TEDx talk where he talked about engineering humans to be allergic to meat because, of course, meat is the reason why the greenhouse gas emissions are emitting and we're going to lose our ozone layer, he talks about in this presentation. But let's hear from him and talk about what he proposes as a solution to induce meat allergies to discourage or dissuade people from eating meat. Here we go. I want to consider a class of solutions that have never been considered before. Hmm. Human engineering. Hmm. It involves the biomedical modification of human beings. I'll give four examples. Here's one. 18% of greenhouse gas emissions come from livestock farming. So if we eat less meat, we could significantly reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. I'll just pause right here. We are eating way less meat compared to years past. I've shared with you those statistics. This has been, this is right from the USDA database. It's well enumerated now. We're eating much less red meat. In contrast, we're eating much more vegetable oils, much more corn, soy, canola. Uh, food products like that, and ultra-processed food consumption is on the rise, and that is connected directly, or I should say directly and indirectly, to greenhouse gas emissions. Lest I remind you, the American medical system is a significant contributor to not only single-use plastic, but also greenhouse gas emissions. Most of the people that are reliant upon our medical system are there and reliant upon that because they are consuming ultra-processed junk food that is contributing to the etiology and the pathophysiology of their diseases, which is why they need so much healthcare expenditures and dependence. So how about, Matthew, we think about ways to discourage and dissuade people from eating ultra-processed junk food? Sugar, for example, what about creating a patch that could cause people to be uh, have an aversion to hyperglycemia? How about that for an example? But here we go. Now, some people would be willing to eat less meat, but mm -hmm. they lack the willpower. No, Human so. engineering could help. Hmm. <laughs> Just as some people are naturally intolerant to milk or crayfish, like myself, we could artificially induce mild intolerance to meat. By stimulating He's actually serious, and people are cheering for this. This is interesting. By stimulating our immune system against common bo uh, bovine proteins. And in this way, we can create an aversion to eating echo and friendly food. Let me just pause here. There's a lot of cheering, and he goes on and about the patches, which we're going to play shortly. But he mentioned eco-unfriendly food. Let's just pick one eco-unfriendly food. Soda. Did you know that Coca-Cola manufactures 100 billion single-use plastic bottles to make and distribute Coca-Cola? You know where those plastic bottles go? They go right into the ocean where they're broken down and contributing to microplastic pollution that is damaging all sorts of marine wildlife and even humans. And we know that there's plastic islands from water bottles and Coca-Cola. So if we're going to literally go this far to human engineer people and create these sort of patches that induce a bovine allergy. Honestly, why aren't we looking at sugar? I mean, I don't know about you. There's probably not meat wrappers uh, in the ocean, ribeye steak remnants in the ocean. There's plastic bottle bottles from single use plastic from water bottles, soda bottles, uh, pop bottles and things like that. So if we're going to be serious and split hairs and go after meat, well, let's take it all the way through and go after all of the environmentally unfriendly foods. What about all the wrappers for candy, for donuts, Pringles, Cheez-Its, Pop-Tarts, all these things? I mean, they're all wrapped in plastic that ends up in landfills that ultimately end up in the ocean. And now we have plastic islands the size of the state of Texas in the Pacific Ocean. All right, here we go. Here's where it gets interesting. And we can do this, for example, by having meat patches, kind of like nicotine patches. People can then wear these patches before they go out for dinner to curb their enthusiasm for eating meat. Here's a second example. Okay. Well, what do you think about this? I think it's absolutely crazy. Again, 
it makes a little bit more sense to create a patch that would have an aversion to hyperglycemia. Maybe it at 150 milligrams per deciliter of blood glucose, you wear this patch and it causes you to feel nauseous, you know, or 175 milligrams per deciliter. Let's just pick a number that is characterized as hyperglycemic. And that would maybe cause people to think twice before guzzling down a soda bottle that just ends up in the ocean or having a candy bar or a pint of ice cream or fill in the blank on, on the ultra processed junk food that about 65% of the calories that people eat is derived from. As I mentioned, meat consumption is down. We're eating much more poultry, much more grain products, vegetable oils, uh, margarine type products. I've shared with you those statistics. Moreover, I think even more importantly, Meat is a health food. It has carnitine, creatine, zinc, iron, vitamin B12, things that are not found in plants. So where are people going to get those nutrients? And it's very satiating, and it's really easy to limit consumption. How often have you ever binged on ground beef or eggs uh, in pro proteinaceous foods? It's really hard to overconsume them because they're naturally satiety inducing. And in contrast, it's really easy to eat a bag of Doritos or an entire thing of goldfish or Pop-Tarts or donuts or ice cream or soda. Those foods are hyper palatable. They induce obesity, insulin resistance, type two diabetes that increase the reliance upon the healthcare system, which there are numerous articles in the peer reviewed academic literature highlighting that the healthcare system not only here in the US, but throughout the world, are significant contributors to not only microplastic, but also greenhouse gas emissions. So why aren't we talking about reducing chronic disease? As you know, many people have reduced their chronic disease prevalence and incidence and symptoms by going on a more whole food, omnivorous style diet. Yes, having some meat, having some eggs, some avocado, you know, maybe some fermented sourdough bread products periodically, some fruits, some vegetables, nuts. I mean, these are the foods that we should be promoting. And last but certainly not least, grass-fed cattle or regeneratively raised agriculture actually sequester carbon in the soil. They are part of the solution not the problem. So I understand there's problems with feedlot animals that are fed corn and you know canola and soy and things like that. I think we would all agree that that could be part of the problem. And that's why we should increase uh, and start to promote and even subsidize ranchers to going back to more of a regenerative agriculture type system. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, I very much appreciate you hitting that like button, sharing this video with a friend, and we'll catch you on a future one down the road.